Thank you. Please remain standing for the reading of the scripture, which is found on page seven, 979. It is Psalm 145, verses 3 through 7. Hear the word of God. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, for a couple weeks now, we have been talking about the voice of God. And I'm ready to let you in on a little secret. Uh, when I first started this out, the way I, I wanted to approach it was I knew God was saying, speak about my voice. Okay, I'd love to do that because I know I struggled many, many years ago saying, God, how do I hear from you? How come others are saying, I hear this God saying this, I hear God told me that, and I'm not hearing it. And so through the years, he, he worked with me and showed me. And so I was ready, I was eager, I was like, yes, Lord, let's, let's talk about your voice so people can understand. And then he has me talk about the voice that calms, the voice that restores, the voice of authority, and we're seeing all these works that God has done, and I'm thinking, Lord, where's your voice? And then he tells me, it's there in all that you've seen. So what, the reason I have been doing this, not necessarily speaking about how you hear, in air quotes, God's voice, is because God wants us to first see what he has done and see that his voice has spoken all of those things for us. So if we think about the last couple of weeks, has God ever restored anything in your life? Anything that was broken, has God restored it? Has God ever calmed you when you had fear or anxiety? Has God given you authority and have you been able to use that authority in your life? Those are the ways that God has been speaking to you, speaking things into action. Remember last week we talked, God didn't just say, I think I want there to be light. He said, let there be light, and there was light. No one was there to hear him say that. Only the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit were there to hear him say, let there be light. But yet there was light. But when he created Everyone, And then years later, when he had Moses come to the mountain, he said, hey, Moses, I said, let there be light. So he speaks of his actions of the past, and we hear the voice of God in that. So what God is, has been doing these last couple of weeks is trying to build a foundation for all of us to look back at what he's done for each of us individually. Can anybody say that God has not been present in their lives. Oh, you could say that, but I could probably work with you and show you how God has been very present in your life. So when we want to hear the voice of God, we simply need to look at what he's done because his voice has been speaking and we see it in the results. But there is still a way that God does speak in the present as well. But I want to give you another example. John chapter 20, verse 9. Okay? I know you probably, I don't know what that is. It's not a real common verse. No, it's not. But John chapter 20, verse 9, John says, they still didn't understand that he had to die and be resurrected. So in that moment, they're standing in, in context. Peter and John are standing in an empty tomb, and they see two angels, and they say, who are you looking for? He's risen. And they're like, what? Who stole him? What's going on? They didn't quite understand in that moment that he had to die 
and be resurrected. Because without that, we have no hope. As Paul says, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die, if not for the resurrection. So in that moment, in their humanness, they didn't quite understand. So I'm saying this for you, that in, your, in the moment when storm is overhead and the winds are blowing and you feel like this is it, I am not gonna get through this. This is the worst situation I've been in in my whole life. God's voice is still working. You may not see it, you may not comprehend it, you may not hear it, but just know that it's there. It is there. Because we can look back and see the restoration, the calmness, the authority. Look back and see these things that God has done. And then we can know, okay, it looks terrible right now, but God's here. I, he's done it in the past. He's going to be doing it right now. He'll get you through. That's the great voice that God has. Is the one that reminds you as David spoke of in the Psalm 145, that generations will speak of his greatness, will speak of his praise. When we do, when we teach our children, here's what God did for me. Or maybe we just say, here's how I got out of this situation. Whatever it is, it's showing the greatness of God in our lives. Remember, nobody was there when he said, let there be light. In fact, nobody was there when he said, separate the waters from the firmament. Nobody was there when he said, let seed-bearing plants of the kind be formed. The angels were there by that time. But not until he created man, and even then, they didn't know they were being created. But we look back and we know that it happened. So, I know that a lot of people want to hear God speak in their mind. I want to hear that voice, that voice I don't recognize, or that voice that I, I soon will recognize, that audible voice, because I can tell you right now, if you think about it, if you, I say to you, think of my voice in your head. You know what my voice sounds like. If I was standing somewhere where you couldn't see me and I was talking, you would know it was me. So you recognize my voice, and you can hear it in your mind if you want to because you've heard it enough. I can do it with many of you, okay? We're looking for that voice that we recognize, hey, that's God. But what God wants us to recognize is that he's there. And we don't necessarily need to hear it audibly in that moment to know that he's there. He is there because he's proven in the past that he is there. Now, there are times and there will be times, and as you learn, you will hear, or I should say, thoughts will come to mind, or that incredible gut feeling will, will come about, or I just know that I need to make a left-hand turn instead of a right-hand turn. That's the voice of God, too, okay? But here's the thing, it is okay to give credit to God, even if you aren't sure. Okay? I want to tell you a little story. This is kind of a, an interesting story. One night I was leaving here, and I get this thought in my mind, go straight. This road right out here, go straight. Usually I turn right and I go down um, towards the, the health center there and make a, make a left and kind of weave my way back to the highway. Go straight. I had a, in that moment, I had a choice. Do I go straight because I got this thought, is that God, or do I turn? I went straight. Okay, God, um, now there's a dead end in front of me. What do I do? I said that too. There's a dead end in front of me. What do I do? Turn left. Okay, so I get this thought in my mind, turn left. So I turn left. I'm like, okay, eventually I'm going to run into the Salvation Army, but immediately after I turned left, turn right. Now, if you're following in your mind, you know I hit another dead end. And before I could say, it's another dead end, I, this thought comes to mind, don't call a dead end what I 
have spoken will be. Now, that meant something very, very personal to me. And immediately I knew it was God. Immediately I knew that those thoughts of going straight, turning left, turning right, it was God. Because that thought of don't call a dead end what I have proclaimed will be meant something very personal to me. So what I'm getting at is when you have these thoughts and you think, oh, that's a crazy thought. Why would I think that? Ask yourself, is that God? Because if you ask yourself in that moment, then you'll start to hear his voice in that moment. Or it could be that you just say, that's a crazy thought. And two weeks later, a month later, a year later, you think, oh, wait a minute. I remember now when I had that crazy thought, when you look back, you see, ah, that was God. So we can look back and see how God's voice was talking, speaking, working, acting. Or we can give him credit for those crazy thoughts we have in the moment. Because we all have them. Because God speaks to every single one of us. And it's okay to acknowledge that it was God. Now, how do we know? How do we get to the point where we start to learn that yes, this was God, or no, this wasn't God? One of the best ways we do is we look back and see what he's done. Oh, okay, so this is when he restored. This is when he calmed. This is when he gave me authority. And it's a similar situation now. So when we look back, we start to recognize the present. That's one way. Another way we know is we think in the moment, I always taught my kids, think before you act. Because that's something my dad taught me. And a great proud dad moment, one time my son was working as a security guard before he became a police officer and at the Akron Public Library. And one of the top security, like the supervisor security guard, he um, came to me. I went to visit my son there while he was working and the man comes up to me, he goes, your son's incredible. I said, well, thank you. He says, no, he, he thinks before he acts. He processes it before he moves on. And I just got this big smile on my face because that's what my dad had taught me and I taught my son. But anyway, think before you act and think, would God really tell me this? Would God tell me to buy a lottery ticket so I can make millions of dollars? No, God will give you the six winning lottery numbers when you see it on television when they draw them. That's when he'll give them to you. Not gonna give them to you before you buy your ticket, okay? So that's not God. Would God tell me that this is a terrible person? No, no. Now that person in front of you may be terrible, but God's not gonna tell you that. What God would say is, move away, let's move on, let's get out of the situation. He's not gonna put down anybody else. So those thoughts you have about the person that you don't like, that is not coming from God. That is coming from the enemy. Those thoughts that you have that I need to harm this person. Now, if someone's trying to harm you and you defend yourself, that's different. Okay, but that's probably your own body, your mind taking over and saying, fight or flight, let's take care of this. But God is not going to tell you to cause harm in any situation to any other person. He's not going to tell you to do anything that will cause harm to any other person. You might say, well, what about if I'm in abuse, an abusive relationship? Okay, God will say, let's move on, but he won't tell you to harm that person. So any thoughts you have about harming someone else, that's not God. If you think back in the past, if you had thoughts about harming someone and you acted on it, that wasn't God. In fact, if you think about if you had thoughts of harming someone, what did you probably do? You probably didn't do it. That was God telling you not to do it. So what I'm getting at is God is not going to go against his word. He's not going to go against what the Bible says. And if we look back in, on our lives and think of the things that we've done, we can see where God has brought us through 
and kept us from harm, kept us from hurting someone, kept us from doing whatever, calmed us, restored us, many different things that he's done, then we can start to recognize that he has been speaking to us for years because he has. God speaks to every single person every single day. And he wants you to understand when he's speaking. And if it means that from this day forward, you have to keep looking back to recognize it, then okay. If you're at the point where you are recognizing it, then okay. But regardless of where you are right now, from this day forward, you're going to start recognizing it better and more. Because he's pouring out his spirit like never before. There's so much going on in this world that is evil that God is saying, now is the time to change. Now, it doesn't mean we're going to see drastic changes. We have to look for them. Some of them are going to be very subtle. Some will be drastic. But just know that going forward, God is moving in a mighty way. So now, more than ever in your life, now is the time to seek him out and discern his voice. It's going to help you. It's going to carry you through. It's going to let you see what he is doing. So you don't have to look back. You can see it now. And if you question it, question him. God, is this you? Amazing things will happen when you do that. God, is this you? And the thoughts will just keep coming, rapid fire, over and over. If you hear the same thought over and over, and you know it's a pure thought, and you know it's God's trying to help you, then acknowledge, thank you, God, and act on it. You still have a choice, okay? God will say, I want you to do this, but you can still say, I'm not doing that. But if you do this, then you will move forward. There could be blessings in it. You can't go wrong when you walk in faith and follow God. And acknowledging him when you aren't sure, that's stepping out in faith. That's saying, okay, I believe God said this, and you know what, it's even okay to say to other people, well, I think God told me, because that's gonna get them thinking, okay, maybe God is talking to me. Turn to God today and each day going forward, asking to hear his voice, asking to understand it, asking him to show you what has happened in the past and prepare for great things coming our way. Someday we'll look back and say, you know, Pastor Phil said things were going to change, and they did. Don't give me the credit. Give it to God. He's the one telling me to tell you right now. So, the voice of God, you may not hear it audibly in your head, but he is speaking, and you can look for the ways. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for speaking to us, for speaking in ways that we may not quite understand in the moment, but we trust you, we believe you, we step out in faith, we, we honor all the ways you speak, and we pray, Father, that you will help us continue to grow in this time to continue to build our relationship with you, to continue to understand your voice, to continue to see what is going on in this world. Help us to discern, help us to understand, help us to grow, help us to help others. Help us to speak where we were otherwise silent. Continue to help us each and every day as we move forward. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.